Welcome to Avatar Technology Digest. As always, we're bringing news on technology, medical cybernetics, and artificial intelligence. And here are the top stories of the last week. Aside from a few animals like pythons and vampire bats that can sense infrared light, the world of this particular electromagnetic radiation has been off limits to most creatures. But now researchers have engineered rodents to see infrared light by implanting sensors in their visual cortex. Before they wired rats to see infrared light, Duke University neuroscientists engineered them to feel it. In 2013, they surgically implanted a single infrared detecting electrode into an area of the rat's brain that processes touch called the somatosensory cortex. The other end of the sensor, outside the rat's head, surveyed the environment for infrared light. They even learned to associate infrared with a reward-based task in which they followed the light to a bowl of water. In the new experiment, the team inserted three additional electrodes spaced out equally so that the rats could have 360 degrees of infrared perception. When they were primed to perform the water reward task, they learned it in just four days, compared with 40 days with a single implant. Next, the researchers began redirecting infrared traffic instead of the somosensory cortex. They stuck the electrode into the rat's visual cortex. And here is the kicker. Rats receiving visual stimulus of infrared learned the same water reward task in a single day. Scientists say their findings are also encouraging for researchers trying to develop sensory prosthetic devices that could one day augment human senses. Heart tissue, unlike other parts of the body, is unable to heal itself once it's damaged. Fortunately, recent work by a group of Carnegie Mellon could one day lead to a world in which transplants are no longer necessary to repair damaged organs. Researchers have been able to take MRI images of coronary arteries and 3D images of embryonic hearts and 3D by print them with unprecedented resolution and quality out of very soft materials like collagens, agenates and fibrins. Printing each layer requires sturgy support from the layers below, so printing with soft materials like gels has been limited. The challenge is that they collapse under their own weight when 3D printed in air. So researchers developed a method of printing these soft materials inside a support bath material. Essentially, they print one gel inside of another gel, which allows us to accurately position the soft material as it's been printed layer by layer. The support gel can be easily melted away and removed by heating to body temperature, which does not damage the delicate biological molecules or living cells that were bioprinted. As a next step, the group is working towards incorporating real heart cells into these 3D printed tissue structures, providing a scaffold to help form contractile muscle. Scientists at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio say they've used electronics to get around a paralyzed man's spinal injury, permitting him to use an implant in his brain to move his arm and hand. The test represents the first time that signals collected in the brain have been conveyed directly to electrodes placed inside someone's arm to restore movement. Surgeons implanted two bunches of silicon electrodes called uta arrays into the volunteer's motor cortex. That is the part of the brain where movements are planned. Wires from each array emerge from the skull through metal ports and connect to computers that interpret the signals. To complete the breach of the man's spinal cord injury, doctors then inserted more than 16 fine wires into the volunteer's right arm and hand. Implants placed in contact with the brain's motor cortex can gather far more detailed information. However, including estimates of what limb movements a person is thinking about. In experiments using robotic arms, some volunteers have managed to move and stack objects. Scientists are now trying to establish similar or better control over a person's own limbs. A single blood test could reveal whether an otherwise healthy person is unusually likely to die of pneumonia or sepsis within the next 14 years. Based on an analysis of 10,000 individuals, researchers have identified a molecular byproduct of inflammation called glyca, which seems to predict premature death due to infections. The findings suggest that high glyca levels in the blood indicate a state of chronic inflammation. That inflammation damages the body, which likely renders individuals more susceptible to severe infections. And that is all for Avatar Technology Digest. Thank you for watching us. And if you like the news, you're welcome to subscribe, follow us on social media and join the conversation. See you soon.